Hello. Today I wanted to talk about seeing things from a distance and not up so close. For instance, look at this. See this? It's a puzzle piece. Can you tell what it is? Can you tell what it together they would make? No, right? It's you're looking at it too close to see what it would make. I'll show you. I'll show you what these puzzle pieces together make. This puzzle. Now, I've been too lazy to actually make it. If this quarantine goes on much longer, maybe I will, but I haven't. But if this, if I had made this puzzle and it was sitting on a table and these pieces were missing, you would notice, wouldn't you? You would notice something wasn't right. Something was missing that needed to be there. That's kind of how life is. When we focus on what is going on that day, the things that can be painful or hard, um, scary, and even good, even good things. When we focus so much on those little things, we can miss the big picture. We can miss that all of those moments, all of those days, experiences, fit together to create the puzzle or the tapestry of our lives. And all of it is important. When we're able to see that those little moments work together to create the bigger picture, it can help us to see this too shall pass, that nothing lasts forever, but everything works to create who we are. It's, it's a beautiful thing how it all fits together. Even in this time of quarantine and pandemic and a lot of fear going on and uncertainty, there's great gifts in it. We are learning that we don't need the things that just a couple of months ago we knew we needed. Like we knew we needed to be able to go out to restaurants and to, to be in close contact with people, which, which we do, obviously. We do need contact with others. But we are seeing that we can do things in different ways. We can do Zoom meetings and connect with people from all over the world. And we never thought about that before. We have a Toastmaster group, and this Saturday uh, here in Denver, we're going to be having people, a, a club from Taiwan joining us. In January, we never thought of that. We never thought that that was a possibility, but through technology, it is. We never thought that we would have to be home and entertaining our children and our spouses or whoever, ourselves. But we are, we're here, and we can learn things from that. We can learn to let go of stuff, let go of our need for perfection, let go of expecting so much from ourselves, expecting our houses to be perfect, our children to be perfect, and our parenting abilities to be perfect. No. As a matter of fact, I've, I've written a book called The Power of Imperfect Parents because it's much more powerful to see ourselves as imperfect and capable of loving through that imperfection, being authentic. I think that is another thing we're learning in this time is it's okay to be who we really are, to experience all of who we are and use this time well, use this time to remember who we are. And it is fine to be selfish. It is 
fine to do what is in my highest good, not what's in your highest good or what you think I should be doing. Let's, let's think about that for a second. If we are being truly selfish, so truly understanding who we are at a soul level and doing things from that point of view, doing things from the point of view of loving ourselves and doing what's in our highest good, we will be better parents. We will be better friends. Because the truth is, what is good for our souls is to be loving, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. To serve, to spend time with spirit, whatever that means to you, to spend time cultivating our own spiritual growth, our own spirituality. So when we approach, let's say, motherhood from that point of view, so when we know that we are making choices because we love ourselves. So we are making the choice to love our children because we love ourselves. And we love our children so much that we want to do things that are in their highest good because that's also in our highest good. It's in our highest good to see them grow and become the young people, the adults that we want them to be, full of love for themselves and others. So when we do that from the point of view of, I'm doing it because I love myself and that feels so good to me. That feels very differently than my mother-in-law said, I have to, or society said, or the school said, or whoever, whatever outside force is, to, even religion, even your religion is telling you, this is how you have to behave. That feels very different and it doesn't feel as good and as loving and as whole. So take some time. Think about you and what you need, truly need. What would loving yourself look like? How would you act if you acted from a point of loving yourself every day? taking the time that you need to be you and making decisions that are in your highest good, which is also in the highest good of those around you. So I love you all. I send you blessings that this is a time when we can discover who we are and we can awaken what is in the highest good of not only ourselves, but the highest good of our communities, our families, our children, whatever. So I love you and I send you blessings that this is a time of awakening for all of us. Be safe. Sending love. Linda Drake.